Peter, James, all those disciples that walked with Jesus and talked with him, that spent time with him and knew him as he was here on earth as the Son of Man, were chastised for being called, O ye of little faith. I wonder how great we really think our faith is when we don't walk on water and we don't accomplish those things that God has done in the past and has done in the present, but maybe we haven't experienced, or maybe you haven't experienced yet. I know for me, faith has nothing to do with some of the miracles I've seen because some of the things that were accomplished through me and around me were irregardless of the faith I had because I did not believe in them at the time that they occurred. And as a matter of fact, I was angry about them happening or being put in the position of embarrassing myself to have to act as though I believed in them and I really didn't because I was a, put it bluntly, a missionary in Mexico at the time and uh, being the only person who spoke Spanish, I was the translator. And so the other 11 missionaries that were there, there were 12 of us, it just happened that way, it wasn't picked, it was nothing magical or mystical about there being 12 of us. But they didn't know how to speak Spanish, so the mission that we were on required me to go from person to person to person, run around a lot, because they were always needing a translator. And so this one young man that wasn't part of my church, I didn't know him very well, and he uh, dragged me into this, you know, floor uh, hut that had a dirt floor. And there on, on the dirt floor was just kind of like barely raised up a little bed that was made on top of the dirt. And there was a man laying in there that had twigs for legs and just very sickly. And I felt very uncomfortable because I could tell by my companion that he was all excited. He wanted to witness and pray, I could tell, but he wanted to do more. And, and I wasn't ready to do more. And so... We were there, and I was on one side of him, and he was on the other, and he was, like, getting ready to do his thing, and I kind of could sense or see that what he was going to do was, like, pray for healing. Now, me, man, I was like, uh-uh, no way, I'm not doing that. And, uh, I was mad, you know, to get put in that position. So, with the family there and everybody bringing in the missionaries, and we were the missionaries, so they were all watching us very closely. He prayed for the man, laid hands on him, and he was getting ready to anoint him with oil and put, like, some little cross, and the woman said, no, no, you, you, you know, I had to translate it, so she says, no, no, you, you pray with the Holy Spirit and you anoint with oil. So she brings out this oil and she starts lavishly pouring it on his legs, and so she grabs the missionary's hands and tells him to pray for him, and he starts rubbing the guy's legs, you know. And <laughs> I'm like, oh boy, here we go. So I'm praying too, and I put my hands down there, and we pray for him. So then, you know, as if that's not enough, they get done praying, you know, and the woman's like, you know, standing here going, okay, and she's waiting, and so he picks the guy up, you know, and says, the name of Jesus, rise and walk, and drops him right on his almost face. And I'm thinking, that does it. I've had it. I'm out of here. I'm mad. I'm not doing this. No, eh, wrong. This is not the way things work. I am sorry, God, but, you know, you find yourself another missionary, another person. I don't do this kind of stupid stuff. Now, I'd already seen God do other things, but healing... And, you know, me having been disabled and, you know, cured, sort of, not really, but sort of, maybe, kind of, I was like, uh-uh, God. So, needless to say, the family didn't mind. They picked the guy up, you know, put him back in his bed. The missionary I was with wasn't upset. He was, matter of fact, content. We went back to the church that we were building, you know, and rolled into our sleeping bags and went to bed. Except me. There was a hill up above, kind of a mound, I guess, but it was kind of tall. 
at um, it was called Monte Ore, Mount Permount, and um, I went up on the top of it, and I had it out with God. I was pissed off. I was ticked. I was mad. I was furious. I was ready to just. If there would have been an angel there, my hip wouldn't have been out of socket. That angel would have been down on the ground. I mean, we would have gone ten rounds, you know what? And it would have been an octagon where the angel lost. Because <laughs> I was mad. But the long and the short of it was, was that a few days later, I was up in front of the church as we built the walls. And we were all sitting around, you know. And, and uh, it was kind of neat. You know, they were like in a half circle behind me. The missionaries had work for the day. And then at night, we always held these kind of like revival meetings, and, you know. The church was there, you know, dirt floor, but, you know, we'd gotten some walls up, you know, there was kind of like cement on the bottom and then cement and stone, <laughs> and then we were building walls, you know, we were getting ready to build the roof, and so it was kind of, kind of nice, and, and, uh, I'm translating this story, you know, and the pastor that was with us, you know, he was telling the story, and I'd translate it, and he'd tell it, and I'd translate it, he'd tell it, and I'd translate it, and, uh, the people were all like enjoying it, you know. We sang songs and all that. Then it was towards the end, and sure enough, there was kind of a commotion. And as at the very beginning of church, the pews were off to the sides, and then um, I was up front, and the pastor was there. There was this kind of noise, you know. We just gotten done teaching. There's a noise. And this man comes down the center aisle with this crowd of people with him, and he's walking. And he's smiling, and he's looking right at me. Of course, I'm the one standing up front. <laughs> the man's legs had gotten meat on them in less than 48 hours. The man was walking that I prayed for. The man had a miracle that had nothing to do with me, but it had everything to do with God. So you see, Faith, though it may be the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen, doesn't have to do with what God is accomplishing anyways. God can do whatever he chooses to do, whether you have the faith to believe it or not. It helps <laughs> your understanding if you have faith the size of a mustard seed. But when you have no faith, when you have anger even, you might just find that God chooses to shake up your world a little bit. Even as he did the Jews when he said that, I am God. Hmm. Isn't that a kick in the pants? For me, I am never surprised as much as the fact that God would use someone like me to share with someone like you the reality of some of the experiences I've been through. <laughs> God only knows why, but God does it. Deserters, you must believe utterly. My love can bear nothing less. I am so often wounded in the house of my friends. Do you think the spitting and scorn of my enemies, the mocking and reviling hurt me? No, not at all. They all forsook him and fled. I know not the man. These left their scars. So now it is not the unbelief of my enemies that hurts, but that's my friends who love and know me, cannot walk all the way with me and doubt my power to do all that I have promised I would do for them. Today, if you don't know Jesus in the way that you want to know him, ask him to reveal himself in a more personal, intimate way. Because he can take you all the way to the day of salvation when he will say and present before the Father, you, faultless. Yeah, faultless. And he's going to do it with exceeding joy because he loves you. But you know, there are times when even Jesus gets a little sad. And the sadness is we doubt what he can do even though he promised he would do it for me and for you.